Hello everyone in Cyber World, welcome back to another video. I'm Richard. And I'm Jennifer, and this is our channel we call Poor Man's DIY. This week we're going to do another laser review. Alright, so let me explain a little something. Uh, some of you may have already seen, we've done a few uh, reviews on longer lasers. Um, we're actually honored, once again, they've reached out to us and asked us to review one of their products, and maybe another one after this one as well. Um, I'm actually truly happy about this because in previous reviews, we, we've always said we're going to do an honest review, and I gave one that might not have been the uh, the highest ranking. Uh, there were some issues with some equipment that along that went along with uh, the longer laser that we did review, and uh, I explained some concerns that I had about it. But uh, they still trust us enough to to do another review. They like the review uh, apparently that we did uh, as an honest opinion, and I think they made some changes to uh, to their product as well and they've asked us to do it once again. So the difference on this particular laser, it actually comes with two parts, or two different lasers. There's a 20 watt uh, diode laser, um, and it also has an infrared laser. The infrared laser is going to allow us to uh, engrave on metal, which we've never done before. So um, I'm pretty, pretty excited about it. Let's go ahead and get into this and show you what exactly this uh, machine can do. The Nano Duo can be controlled using Lightburn or Longer's own software called LaserBurn. But before using any features, we need to connect the laptop using either USB or Wi-Fi, which is easily done. We actually performed many tests over the days to fine tune the settings for the materials we would be using. Out of habit, we made a simple template so we can add images and adjust them to fit on the material as we want them to, be it centered or not. Using the template, we did a quick engraving on slate And now we're really ready to make some stuff. The Longer Nano Duo comes with the built-in AI image generation, which means you can literally generate designs directly from text prompts. Just type in what you want and the Nano Duo software will create that image for you. You select an AI image that you like and import it onto the canvas and you're ready to engrave. All right, what I was, is uh, really wonderful in my opinion, uh, I'm not a big fan of engraving. Uh, if, if you've seen any things that I make for customers or anything else, I kind of avoid engraving, not because any of the machines I have aren't, aren't any good. I just haven't been able to perfect the engraving, uh, the settings I can find, and it just doesn't, doesn't, doesn't pop the way it does. Sometimes I've engraved some images, some pictures, and it took hours, and it still didn't look as good as those that I've seen uh, people do on the near internet and I know that has a lot to do with the software fixing uh, uh, the contrast and all these other things and I, I just don't have the skills to do that in this particular case I just pulled up uh, uh, using the AI f features on the software from laser burn and uh, made this image and from there burn this now in this case I use an expensive co wood just to see how it was going to turn out and this was fantastic and this only took a couple minutes which blew me away so it was the best image engraving I have ever done and it was so fast it was unreal. Even though the laser is designed for engraving it's a 20 watt laser so it can cut wood just like this. We accomplish this by importing an image onto laser burn and converting it to a vector image. We then set the power and speed to a level that would allow for the laser to cut. The 
there was a lot of surface burn that occurred. This can be prevented with an air assist, which unfortunately is not part of the Nano Duo, or by using masking tape prior to cutting, which is a whole different discussion we've covered in the past and may do so again soon. As mentioned before, the Nano Duo combines a 20 watt blue diode with a 2 watt infrared laser. Uh, so now you can work with a wider range of materials to include clear acrylics and even some metals. It's basically two machines in one. This is accomplished by instructing the software to engrave, at which time you can select the laser type. This can also be accomplished with Lightburn by clicking a console tab and selecting IR for infrared or BL for blue laser. Now we have a comparison between the blue dial and the infrared. The blue dial one, which is this one. Okay, and then we have the infrared, which is this one. Okay, the blue dial was really, really good. We really liked it, um, but the infrared came out much sharper. Although we didn't actually test it, it has a cool feature of a 360 degree um, handheld freedom. In other words, you can lift this up and put it up against the wall and you can engrave almost anything, bags, furniture, uh, or even walls. Okay, now uh, it's time for me to be honest and give you some, uh, some insight on some things that I found to be a little bit of a concern. One, um, I love, first of all, I love the fact that they include something for safety. Uh, this protects uh, children from uh, happen to walk by and stick their hands under a laser that it happens to be on. Or for those who uh, don't wear the safety goggles that they're supposed to, this, uh, this helps a lot uh, keeping people from uh, getting injured. Now, what I have found is that um, on the top of this particular shield, there is a couple holes. What these holes are for, are for the um, bottom of the laser where they have a couple lenses. These are used for the uh, manual focusing. Now, so what was the issue on this one here? Well, this actually sticks on here. It sticks on here as such and is held on by magnet. But what I have found on a couple occasions while doing the autofocus, the machine would go up or down on its own for focusing. There have been two occasions where it needed to go down substantially lower and pinching this, it went too far too low that it pinched the shield into the, the, the base itself and it was forcing itself to try to go lower where it couldn't go any further. Now, at the time, it was a matter of I had to power it off and then uh, everything was okay. I raised up the platform and then I was able to, to take the shield off and so forth. It wasn't that big of a deal. But what I noticed is that the, the, um, the focus lens were off and I couldn't figure out what it was. So what I came to realize is that the holes on here are maybe a little bit too small, such so that as it was pressing against this, these two uh, uh, lasers that are used for focusing, uh, they got smashed and they moved and they were pointing in a different direction. And what that did was the focusing uh, that's needed to, you're supposed to take these two lines and line them up into one point. Well, you weren't able to do that anymore because these lenses got moved. So I think it's gonna be a simple solution if I were to do this. I would just make sure that these holes are large enough so that uh, they don't even come anywhere near close to the, the lenses, I, I'm sorry, uh, close to the uh, focusing lasers so that uh, it's not, a, it, it won't take much. I just think it just needs to be a little bit bigger hole is all. All right, uh, the other feature, I haven't figured out why, but uh, the two occasions that I mentioned where it did autofocus, it went down far too much uh, compared to what it was supposed to do. Um, not a big deal, this is a uh, production uh, model, I'm sorry, a, a beta model, so uh, hopefully they'll get that worked out so it never goes down further than what it is required to. All right, based on our review, we really feel the longer Nano Duo is definitely worth checking out. We've been so impressed and we think you will too. If you want to learn more, please click on the link description below. Longer, thank you so much for having us to review your product. As for next week, uh, we're, we plan on getting back into our DIY roots. We got a couple things that we have to, to work on. I have to do some testing to see what the actual problem is before I replace it and fix it and show you how to do it. So until we meet again, bye-bye.